All right, this is discrete math. This will be lesson 10, and this is going to be a brief introduction to recurrence relations. So why recurrence relations? Well, they occur in biology, computer science, finance, medicine, and more. In computer science specifically, uh, they can be used to model the running time of recursive algorithms, which is what we're going to focus on later on. So what's a recurrence relation? Well, uh, a recurrence relation is an equation that defines a sequence based on a rule that gives the next term as the function of a previous term. So they typically contain a recursive step and a base case. So recursive step and base case. And the most simple example I could think of is the Fibonacci numbers. And that's where you, the next term in the sequence is going to be the sum of the previous two. And that, the way we write this mathematically in a sort of sequential notation would be f sub n is equal to f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2, where f0 is going to be 0 and f1 is going to be 1. And so using this recurrence, let's try to figure out the next two terms. Well, the next one's going to be 0 plus 1, which is 1, 1. The next one is going to be 2. Then the next one is going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3. Whoop, that's 3. And the next one's going to be 5, because that's 2 plus 3. Then 8, and then so on. Right? So we're just adding the next one in the sequence. Or we're just adding the previous two in the sequence to make the next term. So that's the Fibonacci numbers. Another example would be simple compound interest. So say that we have an interest rate of 3% and a principal of $1,000. That's going to be our principal. It's going to be our base case. And then the interest rate is going to be 1 plus, uh, the growth factor is going to be 1 plus the interest rate, which will be 1.03. And then our rule for simple compounding interest would be uh, b sub n is going to be uh, 1.03 times b sub n minus 1. Or in other words, the next payment is going to be 3% higher than the previous one. Simple enough. And then the final example that I have is modeling the amount of a uh, drug, like a prescription drug, in a bloodstream. So this would be one of the applications to medicine. Uh, let's say that we give a patient a dose of 100 milliliters of something, just uh, in the start. And then every hour, we give him 20 uh, milliliters of the drug. And then the body consumes, uh, let's say, a quarter of it. So that means 75% remain. So that would mean that the next term in the sequence is going to be 75% of whatever is currently there, plus 20 milliliters, since we're adding that in. So that'll be the next uh, amount of drug that's be in the person's bloodstream. So this is how we would compute a value in a recurrence relation. So using this simple compounding interest formula, if $2,000 is invested at a fund at 5% a year, how much would be in the fund? How much would the fund be worth in four years? Well, we would first develop the model, so we know that our principal is going to be our base case, which is two thousand dollars, and we know that since we have a five percent growth rate, uh, we're going to have our growth factor be one plus that, so one point oh five, and that's going to be multiplied by a sub n minus one. Right. So let's try to figure it out. Um, how much? our fund will be worth. So first we're going to find out the case uh, where n equals 1, so a sub 1, is going to be um, a naught times 1.05. That's just going to be 2,000 times 1.05, which is 2,100. <coughs> so uh, now that we have that, we can find a2, which is just going to be a1 times 1.05, which is going to be 2,100. All right, that's we're just borrowing that from there. So it'll be 2100 times 1.05, which is 22.05. Well, this is A2, so now we can calculate A3. A3 is just going to be A2 times 1.05, and then we're going to get um, 2315.25. Repeat the process again. We're going to get um, 2431.01. So the fund will be worth $2,431 and one cent in four years. All right. So you might be thinking that obviously we can just use a, the formula for simple interest 
Well, this is how you kind of come up with the formula. So we're just given constraints, or given constants, R and P, and the real numbers. So that A sub n is going to be R times A sub n minus 1, and A naught is P. So P for principal, and R will be for the growth factor, 1 plus the rate. we're simply going to find a, what a sub n minus 1 is, and we know that that's r times a sub n minus 2. So that means a sub n is going to be r times a sub n minus 1, but we know that a sub n minus 1 is just um, r sub n, r times a sub n minus 2. This should all be subscripted. And we know that this is equivalent to r squared times a sub n minus 2. If we repeat this k times, a sub n is going to be R, r to the kth power times a sub n minus k. So that means if we let n equal k, we see that a sub n is going to be r sub n times a naught. Or that's just r sub n times p. So this is what's called the substitution method, where we just substituted the previous value back in, saw a pattern, and we kind of assumed the solution. No, that's kind of cool, you might think, but how do we know that this works? Well, we're going to use mathematical induction. All right, so on the previous slide, we found that a sub n is equal to r times a sub n minus 1, and that was equivalent to r sub n times p, where p a naught is p. Well, how do we know this is true? We're going to prove it. So first, we have our base case, which means that it, we have to check that it works for at least one condition. So uh, we're going to check a naught. So that's going to be r to the 0 power times p. But since r to 0 is 1, it'll just cancel out, leaving only p, which is what we have to find up here. So good, the base case holds. Now we need to prove that the induction step works. Well, a sub n is going to be equal to um, r to the n times p. So that means a sub n plus 1 is going to be equal to r times a sub n, which is r to the n plus 1 times p. Which also means that this is equivalent right, to r times r to the n plus p. But note that r to the n plus p, this guy right here, or r to the n times p, this guy right here, is just equal to a sub n by definition. So that means that a sub n plus 1 is equal to r times a to the n, which is equal to r times a to the n. Well, this is exactly what we wanted to show. We kept one thing on the left-hand side the whole time, and we showed that the right-hand side was equal to that. So we've just proved our uh, inductive step. So since our base case worked, and our inductive step worked, We've just proven that that relationship holds. So that completes the proof. All right, so since recurrences are a huge topic, I'll discuss them in greater length in later videos. So this is just a simple introduction. Later on, I'm going to be talking about um, ho linear homogeneous recurrence relations with constant coefficients and how to solve those. Uh, also, we're going to talk about random number generation uh, difference equations, and asymptotic analysis for algorithms. Alright, thanks for watching.